everybody, it is John from Watson Baptist Church again, and it is also time for Fun with Crafts, and today we're going to have fun with face paint. And to do that, we have a very special elite guest artist to come and join us, someone who's been doing face painting for years and years and years of her life, um, the wonderful, talented, gifted Mandy Pemberton. Say hello. Hi. Hey. And so Mandy is going to, I don't know if this is enough. Look how small that is. It's pretty small. It's, it's like the small for like lipstick, like lip, like, like, yeah, this is too small. But we're going to find out if a little bit goes a long way. And Mandy is going to paint today, right? Mm -hmm. And this is going to be your canvas. Yes. The most beautiful canvas. The most beautiful canvas. Y'all, you heard that? And... I'm just going to sit and she's going to do it. And notice the colors here. We've got tiger colors, LSU. This is uh, purple and gold um, because, again, this is LSU Central. And Joe Burrow's getting drafted tonight. So it's, you know, auspicious timing to do a little face painting. So you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? No, but we'll start anyway. We're about halfway there, right? We've got the yellow. Mm -hmm. This isn't jaundice. This is <laughs> this is yellow, very yellow. Yellow face paint. And you even got the beard really good. This better wash out. I hope so. I can smell it. And by the way, the brush, this brush, tickle torture. It's cruel and unusual spousal abuse. It was should have been written in our wedding vows. You told me to. You could use your finger, but. This really tickles. So if you see me squinching and stuff, I, I, I am in agony. This is this suffering for, for art is, is what this is. Yes. All right, let's finish. All right, it took a while. He was very squirmy and very ticklish. But with two little tubes of paint and a brush, there he is. <laughs> All right, this looks amazing. And it it's really cold on my face. Is that supposed to feel cold and tingly? Am I allergic to this stuff? Probably. <laughs> it looks so good. I could preach wearing these colors and get massive, massive numbers on Facebook if I preached wearing this. Yes, you would. For Sunday. I'm not gonna do that though. So anyway, you did a great job. Thank you. All right. So my wife is amazing, obviously. And by the way, as time passes, this paint is getting brighter and brighter. And you could just start calling me John Yellowbeard. I really hope it washes off at any rate. I was going to do something else with this devotion. I was going to wear this paint and go to Walmart and ask people from six to 10 feet away, socially distant, if they thought I looked strange or unusual or crazy. And given this is LSU Tiger Central, I was betting that seven out of 10 people would say, no, man, you look awesome. You look great, like a true fan. I bet you that we would have a thousand viewers on Facebook if I wore this preaching on Sunday, but I'm not, you know, but you just look great. Go Tigers. But the weather was so bad outside. I was afraid this would just wash and smear and I would look like a sad, scary clown. But to continue in the devotional thought about being a fan, did you know that the word fan is an abbreviation for the word fanatic? And a fanatic can be defined as someone who is unreasonably enthusiastic or zealous 
Someone who goes beyond what seems reasonable for someone or something. And I don't know about you, but I know some real college football fans, some fanatics out there. And they're praying right now that the quarantine will end by mid-September, by the way. What's unfortunate is that in our culture, you can be a radical sports fanatic. You can be passionate. You can be vocal about your favorite team. And nobody will blink an eye, unless it's Alabama. But so many professing believers, we are not nearly as passionate about following Christ obeying Christ, much less being vocal and talking about the gospel message that he commanded us, he commanded us to share, all for the fear of being labeled as some sort of fanatic, right? You know, the one thing I love about sports fans is they do not conform. They will wear their colors proudly, and they don't care what other people think about it. Again, a lot of us as believers, we... We want to blend in. We, we, we don't want to show off like this. We don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. That's a tempting thing to do, to chase after acceptance. I, I've been there. But here's the thing, and I, I want you to think about this. In the Bible, do you know who God used in a dynamic way, and they achieved amazing things for his glory, and they grew closer to God in that process? And at the same time, they weren't a fanatic? Me neither. Because God didn't use those kinds of people. God did use a guy named Paul. And after his conversion, Paul was a fanatic, wasn't he? He was 100% team Jesus. In fact, he asked the question in Galatians 1.10. He said, what then? Am I now trying to win the approval of people or God? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Jesus Christ. What about you? Are you a fanatic for Christ? Hey, thank you so much for watching. Go Tigers!